All right, CAD fans, in this video, we're going to look at manipulating, copying, and modifying existing elements. So, for example, I could take this line here. If I left click on it once, it puts these blue grips on it. And you'll see that I can either stretch or lengthen. If I left click on the end of that, I could stretch it. I can click on it, left click again, move it. You know, change the orientation. I can, if I, but if I grab the middle of it, then it wants to move it. I'll hit the U key to undo that. We can also line it up with other things. So if I select it, grab that grip, I can have it snap right to that end point of that line. So those are some shortcuts that you can use to move things around. If I hit the escape key now, I can get my selection to go away. So I just hit escape a couple of times. We also have the copy and move tools up here, so we can make a copy, let's say, of that piece of roof line. So I select the object, I hit enter, and then base point, I'll move from the center, midpoint of that line, I'll move out, let's say, uh, 0.5. I'll just type in 0.5. And that makes another copy of that line. And then it can continue to make copies of that line. Maybe I wanted it a little thicker. I can hit U for undo. And maybe I wanted it more like about three inches. And I hit enter, and there it is. You can continue to make copies over and over again, or if you want to, uh, you know, we've lost the command now, uh, but you can always hit the space bar to start it again. Select that object, enter, base point from the midpoint, I'll move it away. What do we do? Three inches there, so let's do that again. And maybe we'll move the rest of these up. Uh, let's see, hit enter to get out of that, and then we'll hit the space bar to do it again. That one, enter, over three inches. Now I'm going to do the base point. Three inches. And that's pretty good. Get out of that. Now it looks like I'm going to have to do some cleanup to get this to line up up at the top here. huh? So what I'll do is use the uh, grips to extend this. We'll use lengthen. And that'll go right out in a straight line. I'll do the same thing with this one. Just lengthen. And that makes a couple of crossing lines there. I'll enter to get out of that tool. A couple of times. Trim. Select objects to trim. I want to trim this one and that one. I hit enter. And then just draw a little fence over the end of that. And a little fence over the end of that. And there it is. We can do the same thing in here. I'll just use the space bar to start this again. That one, that one, enter. And that trims that up pretty nicely. And that kind of brings us to selecting things. I've got to do a command here, let's see. Uh, let's do zoom all. You can see this again. If we wanted to use the Move tool, that's immediately asked us to select objects. So we can just click on them, or you can left-click not on an object and use a window. Everything that's within the window will highlight. Or you can do, so we've got that object selected. If we get out of that again and try it one more time, we do Move. If we do a window like that, see it didn't select it. But if you do uh, crossing, then whatever you do, whatever you cross, it will select. And see it went out of crossing mode already. What you can do is if you go from left to right, it will get everything that's inside the box. If you go from right to left, it'll get everything you cross. So that's how I just selected everything. That right to left, left to right is what's called implied windowing. If I wanted to go back through those, I'd just hit the U for undo and it would go back 
and unselect. So you can be in the middle of things and use the U to go back and forth. Uh, the other thing you could do, I'll hit the escape key a couple of times. If we did uh, same thing, we could do select, just type it in, and then maybe we want everything. Type ALL for all, and it'll do it that way too. Whoa, there it is. The largest dump truck in the world. The Caterpillar 797B. Gross weight of over a million pounds. It can haul 380 tons of material. And it's a little over 21 feet tall. Cool. Alrighty then, I'll hit this gate key to get out of that selection. Let's look at a couple other handy things. This button down here is the polar tracking. Uh, which you can get with the F10 key and what that does is if you say take a line it will automatically kind of snap to the polar coordinates being the X and Y axes and you can also set it at 45 degrees or as many as you want if you right click settings polar tracking you can see that it's set for me at 45 right now so every 45 degrees it'll it'll snap to that's kind of a handy tool. Another handy tool we can use, I'll, I'll get out of this here. If I'm typing in values, like I want to go over three feet, nine inches at zero, you can hit the tab key to go back and forth between the two. If I decide, oh, I didn't want three feet, nine, if I hit the tab key, it goes back. Maybe I wanted four feet, nine inches, so I can just type typing again. And I'll have that zero degrees, and just hit enter, and there's the line. Uh, so the tab key takes you back and forth. You can also hit the backspace key, that'll do the same kind of thing. Another real useful tool is this object snap tracking, which allows me to do something like this. If Let's say I want to put a circle in the middle of this box. I can hover over that midpoint and start dragging down. It puts a dashed line, and then I go to the other side, go over the midpoint, and dashed line. You can see it gives me two dashed lines right in the middle and I can snap to those as the center and then draw a circle in there. That can become pretty pretty snazzy too.